When drugs are metabolized via cytochrome P452D6 metabolism, we get a lengthening of the QT interval on the EKG. So cytochrome P450 hepatic metabolism is directly related to prolonged QT intervals, which is the time it takes for the ventricles to contract and then reset so that the heart can contract again. The QTC is the corrected QT interval for the associated heart rate. Ibogaine in itself causes hypotension, bradycardia, meaning a slowing of the heartbeat. Many patients will experience heartbeats as low as 20 beats per minute. Sometimes this lasts for a second. It can be treated with very small doses of atropine and seems to go away. However, we consider any bradycardia to be anything less than 60 beats per minute. Interestingly enough, these patients did not lose consciousness even though their heartbeats went to rates that were not consistent with being alive. Um, and there are people in this room who have seen that effect with me on several occasions and it seems to be more shocking for the doctors than it does for the patients. The problem is, if the QT gets too prolonged, you get a very certain specific arrhythmia known as torsades de point, which in French means the twisting of the points. It can look very much like ventricular tachycardia. Now many patients who come in who are cocaine addicted or stimulant addicted have hyperexcitable hearts. Um, they're not in the best health. These are not usually healthy people. So they're prone to PVCs. If you treat torsades to point as you would treat ventricular tachycardia or V fibrillation with class two antiarrhythmics, you will kill the patient. So the ability to recognize VTAC or VFib from their tots to points is critical. That means the patients must be monitored, cardiac monitored. Also, congenital prolonged QT syndrome occurs in approximately one in every 100,000 population, meaning that having EKGs on these patients prior to treatment is critical because you never know, you know, one death is too many, especially when there's a drug research going on and we're, we have people out there who don't want to see this drug come out. Now compared, you know, every drug out there has some toxic effects. If you look statistically of, you know, congenital QT syndrome and how many patients go into liver failure from taking the drug Tylenol, acetaminophen, it's much less than an over-the-counter drug. Yet it's something that has to be realized. There are other ways to treat these patients. So rec you must be able to recognize torsades TDP from ventricular arrhythmias, VTAC specifically, VFib, and we've never had to use cardioversion on, I've treated over 600 patients have never had to use cardioversion or electricity on any patients. The drug is a negative chronotrope, meaning it slows the heartbeat. Yet most drugs that work on slowing the heartbeat are beta blockers. Now it's interesting, what is withdrawal? Withdrawal is fight or flight response. That's epinephrine, okay, where acetylcholine is more rest and digest. So clonidine, how does clonidine work? It's an alpha blocker, okay? Now beta blockade is another thing. Beta blockade concerns the heart and lungs. It slows the heartbeat. It has certain risks of masking symptoms of diabetes given to patients who have breathing abnormalities, patients who have um, heart blocks of the second and third degree, and they may be dangerous to give. We see a slowing of the heartbeat and lowering of blood pressure on patients who take Ibogaine. That is across the board. So patients who have slow heart rates to begin with, any cardiac blocks, first degree, second degree, and certainly third degree, they wouldn't be in your office, they'd be getting pacemakers, um, low blood pressure. These are patients you may want to really consider twice before treating with Ibogaine. The other thing we noticed, and this is the most interesting part, is this bizarre changes in the ST T wave morphology of the EKGs, which may be related to the QT, lengthening of the QT, but sometimes aren't. It seems to be is that people metabolize Ibogaine in different ways. There are four different types of hepatic metabolizers. There's ultra-rapid, rapid, medium, and slow metabolizers. 
meaning how fast will they convert the nor ibogaine into the ibogaine and how much ibogaine will they nor ibogaine will they actually make depending on how they metabolize the drug Luckily, 80 some odd percent are regular metabolizers, meaning they'll go through the six to eight, 12 hour um, oneric experience, and then they go through a cognitive phase. And if you, it's interesting, the patients say, it's, what are you doing? They say, we're working, we're working. They're thinking about the experiences they had. They, they're still in bed, but at this point we're able to get them up. It seems that the, the dyskinesis, the coordination effects, while they're under the effects of Ibogaine itself, it's almost like they, they would fail a DUI test on the side of the road. They're not able to do tandem walk. Um, there is some dyskinesia. That seems to pass after eight to 12 hours. I have had patients who that's lasted for 18 hours. Those are slow metabolizers. They have a very long, quote unquote, spiritual-like experience. Question is, are they making the same amount of byproduct that's preventing withdrawal as the regular metabolizers. What we're seeing are biphasic T waves, flattening of the T waves. Now the T wave on the EKG, as for those of us who went to medical school here, would taught that it's a, it's a tenth of potassium. As T waves get bigger, that relates to hyperkalemia, high levels of potassium. And as T waves go flat, there's low levels of potassium. So we drew certain potassium levels on patients while we saw these T-wave changes, and they were absolutely normal. It's interesting, what could be happening here? Plus, if, they, if it was affecting this electrolyte, we should have seen increased cardiac arrhythmias, and we weren't seeing that. We also saw what is known as a digitalis effect, the Salvador Dali mustache kind of effect on the T-waves. Um, this gave the idea that there may be other cardiac benefits, usages of this drug that we don't even know about yet outside of the detoxification psychiatric field. We may have the first, you know, we have a whole class of drugs known as um, calcium channel blockers. And Ibogaine may in some way be acting as a potassium channel blocker into the heart, meaning that serum potassium levels are remaining normal, but yet potassium is not being passed into the heart cells. But if we stay that, it should make the heart more prone to ectopy, to VPCs, and we don't really see that. We see some increased ectopy, we do see VPCs, short runs of VTAC. Very often, I would say 99.9% .9 of the case, they, they resolve by themselves and they don't remain um, run into runs of VTAC. They're short salvos of uh, two to three to five beat VPCs in a row. Hypertension usually due to the bradycardia effect of Ibogaine. 